Picture this. You step onto a plane in New York, grab a coffee, and by the time you finish it, you're already landing in Beijing. Two hours. That's the world China says could be possible with its new Mach 16 engine. To put that into perspective, the fastest passenger plane ever built, the Concorde, flew at Mach 2, just over twice the speed of sound. The United States has tested hypersonic aircraft that reached Mach 9.8, but Mach 16 is on another level entirely. If true, it means circling the planet in less time than it takes to watch a Marvel movie. This isn't just about speed, it's about rewriting what we think is possible in aviation. But here's the twist. This jaw-dropping claim didn't come out of nowhere. It came after years of sanctions, restrictions, and technological roadblocks that forced China to take a very different path. And that's where this story really begins. For decades, China's aviation industry relied heavily on foreign technology. Engines, materials, even design blueprints often came from the West or from Russia. But that dependency became a weakness. The United States, under both Trump and Biden, slapped heavy restrictions on Chinese access to high-tech components. Europe followed suit in many areas. Overnight, parts that were once available for purchase were locked behind political walls. Think of it like being cut off from a global toolbox. You're told to build a machine, but half the tools are taken away. That's exactly where China found itself. And instead of backing down, Beijing doubled its investment in homegrown research. Billions of dollars were poured into hypersonic programs, aerospace institutes, and private startups. This isolation didn't just slow China down, it forced a shift in mindset. If China wanted to compete in aviation, it had to stop copying and start inventing, that's the pressure cooker environment where this Mach 16 engine story was born. So what exactly is this new engine? How does something as radical as Mach 16 even work? To understand that, we need to break down the science behind China's hypersonic dream. At the heart of China's Mach 16 claim is a technology called the scramjet, short for supersonic combustion ramjet. Unlike a normal jet engine, a scramjet doesn't use spinning turbine blades to suck in air. Instead, it rides on its own speed. Here's how it works. At hypersonic speeds, air rushing into the engine is already compressed by sheer force. That compressed air mixes with fuel and ignites, creating massive thrust. Think of it like sticking your hand out of a moving car window. At 50 miles per hour, you feel pressure. At 500 miles per hour, that pressure is overwhelming. Scramjets turn that natural compression into power. The beauty and the challenge of scramjets is that they only work at extreme speeds. You can't just start one from a runway like a Boeing 747. Something else, like a rocket booster, has to push the aircraft fast enough for the scramjet to switch on. So, when China talks about Mach 16, it's not claiming to have reinvented flight from scratch. They're betting that their scramjet design can handle temperatures, pressures, and speeds that have melted or broken every attempt before. But theory is one thing. Has China actually tested this technology? Let's look at the experiments and data that brought this bold Mach 16 announcement to life. Proving a scramjet isn't like test driving a new car. The conditions are so extreme that most prototypes burn out before they can gather useful data. Yet in recent years, China has released tantalizing glimpses of its hypersonic experiments. Back in December 2020, Chinese researchers announced they had successfully run an oblique detonation ramjet in a lab, a radical engine that could, in theory, hit Mach 16. That claim instantly caught global attention because it suggested not just a scramjet, but an even more advanced design. Then came reports of real-world tests. State media described trial flights of hypersonic gliders and experimental vehicles, some launched by rockets to ignite scramjets at blistering speeds. The details were vague. Altitude, duration, and performance data were rarely shared. But the message was clear. China was signaling progress. Outside experts reacted with caution. Some argued the claims were exaggerated, pointing to the lack of independent verification. Others said that even if the numbers were inflated, the pace of testing still showed a serious national push. In short, while the rest of the world saw headlines, inside China the experiments marked a steady drumbeat of ambition. Each test a step toward proving hypersonic engines could move from concept to reality. But bold claims are only as strong as the tools that test them. And that's where China's secret weapon enters the story. The JF-22 Wind Tunnel, one of the most powerful hypersonic facilities on Earth. Now, to test a hypersonic engine, you can't just strap it to a jet and hope for the best. 
you need a way to recreate the extreme temperatures, pressures, and speeds of flight without ever leaving the ground. That's why China built the JF-22 wind tunnel, a facility so powerful it's been described as a time machine for aerospace. Unlike older tunnels in the US or Russia, which could simulate conditions up to around Mach 10 or 12, the JF-22 claims to reach the equivalent of Mach 30. Of course, no aircraft is aiming to fly that fast, but it gives researchers a margin to study stability, heat, and shock waves in unprecedented detail. Think of it as a cosmic treadmill for engines. Instead of jogging at a normal pace, engineers can crank the dial all the way to warp speed and see how their designs hold up. The tunnel blasts air at hypersonic velocity, compresses it to insane temperatures, and then engineers slot in scaled engines or vehicle models to measure every variable, thrust, drag, heat resistance, and combustion stability. This facility is not just about bragging rights, it means China can run hundreds of virtual flights in a lab before ever risking a real test vehicle. And that kind of accelerated trial and error is exactly how breakthroughs move from sketches to working prototypes. But simulating Mach 16 in a tunnel is one thing, Turning that into a reliable flight engine is another. So what does it really mean when China says they've tested Mach 16? Hitting Mach 16 in a lab isn't the same as flying it over the Pacific. A wind tunnel test is a simulation. It recreates some of the conditions of hypersonic flight, but not the whole picture. When Chinese researchers say their engine ran at Mach 16 in the JF-22, what they mean is this. The air was blasted through the tunnel at hypersonic speed, the fuel ignited, and the combustion remained stable long enough to measure thrust and airflow. That's an impressive step. Most scramjets in the past could only stay lit for a few seconds before flaming out. But here's the catch. A tunnel can't replicate every factor of real flight. It doesn't capture the stresses of vibration across an aircraft's frame, the unpredictable turbulence of the upper atmosphere, or the fact that materials have to withstand blistering heat for minutes, not just seconds. So yes, sustaining an oblique detonation engine at simulated Mach 16 is a technical breakthrough. But until an actual flight test shows the engine powering a vehicle across the sky, this achievement stays in the lab success category. That's why experts worldwide are cautious. They know there's a vast gulf between proving a concept in a controlled environment and turning it into a jet that could carry people or payloads. To really grasp the scale of China's claim, we need to put it in context. How does Mach 16 compare to America's best programs, like the X-43A or the X-51A? The answer shows just how bold, or unbelievable, this leap might be. To understand how bold China's Mach 16 claim really is, you have to look at the ladder of hypersonic progress. Let's start with the United States, which has led most of the major breakthroughs so far. In 2004, NASA's X-43A set a record by hitting Mach 9.6, but only for about 10 seconds, and it was rocket boosted to get there. Later, the US Air Force's X-51A Waverider managed a more practical achievement, cruising at Mach 5 for around 200 seconds in 2013. That was long enough to prove a scramjet could actually sustain thrust in flight. On the commercial side, companies like Boom Supersonic are still aiming for Mach 2.2, roughly Concorde speed, just to bring back supersonic passenger travel. Even that is considered ambitious today. Now compare those numbers to China's laboratory claim, Mach 16. That's not a small step forward. That's jumping several rungs on the ladder at once. If verified, it would more than double NASA's best and triple the sustained speeds demonstrated by the X-51. That's why experts reacted with such a mix of awe and doubt. On paper, it looks like China is leaping a whole generation ahead. But in practice, without independent flight data, it remains a claim waiting for proof. But to climb that high on the speed ladder, China had to solve problems that have broken programs in the past. Materials that melt, engines that tear themselves apart, and controls that fail at hypersonic speeds. So what hurdles did they really have to overcome? Flying at Mach 16 isn't just about speed. It's about survival. At that velocity, air doesn't feel like air anymore. It feels like a wall of fire slamming into the aircraft. The nose, wings, and engine surfaces face temperatures hot enough to melt steel in seconds. To withstand that, engineers need super alloys, advanced ceramics, and heat-resistant composites that can survive thousands of degrees without cracking. Cooling systems have to channel fuel itself through the skin of the engine, acting like liquid armor against heat. Then, there's the combustion chamber, the heart of the engine. 
At hypersonic speed, fuel must mix and ignite in milliseconds. Too slow, and the engine stalls. Too chaotic, and the shockwaves tear it apart. Chinese teams have experimented with pre-spraying fuel and shaping the intake geometry, so air slams in at just the right angle to keep the fire stable. And even if the engine holds, you still need control. At Mach 16, tiny vibrations can feel like earthquakes. Seals and bearings fail under stress. Guidance computers must make course corrections faster than a human can blink, or the vehicle will tumble out of the sky. These are the problems that have humbled every nation's hypersonic program. If China truly has answers to all of them, then the claim isn't just about speed. It's about mastering physics at the edge of what's possible. And if those hurdles really are solved, the question becomes, what's it all for? Because a Mach 16 engine wouldn't just be a lab trophy, it could change travel, space launches, and even the balance of military power. If this engine works outside the lab, the implications are, well, staggering. Imagine three major arenas where Mach 16 power could rewrite the rules. First, civilian travel. Right now, a flight from New York to Beijing takes about 14 hours. A Mach 16 aircraft could do it in under two. Business trips, emergency aid delivery, even global tourism would look completely different. But comfort and safety are major hurdles. At hypersonic speeds, every vibration feels amplified, and the heat shield technology that works on rockets may not be suitable for passengers sipping coffee at 100,000 feet. Second, space access. Hypersonic engines could act as the first stage of a space launch system, replacing expensive rocket boosters. An aircraft could take off from a runway, reach hypersonic speeds, then release a small rocket to carry payloads into orbit. This could slash launch costs and make satellite deployment, or even space tourism, much more routine. And third, the military dimension. This is the part that worries Washington, Moscow, and other capitals. At Mach 16, a strike aircraft could reach any point on Earth in about two hours. Defensive systems would have almost no time to respond. Hypersonic drones could scout enemy territory before radars even picked them up. In warfare terms, this is the difference between hours of warning and minutes. Civilian aviation, space exploration, and military power, all three could be transformed by a single engine. That's why the international reaction hasn't just been curiosity, but concern. But technology never exists in a vacuum. The moment such an engine is even close to real, politics and strategy shift. And that brings us to the geopolitical ripple effects. Breakthroughs in aviation aren't just about science. They redraw maps of power. If China truly has a Mach 16 engine, the ripple effects would shake alliances worldwide. For the United States and its allies, it would mean doubling down on export controls. Washington has already restricted advanced chips, sensors, and avionics from reaching Beijing. A hypersonic breakthrough would only tighten those screws. Expect new blacklists joint bans with Europe, Japan, and South Korea, and more pressure on companies not to share even dual-use technology. For regional rivals like India and Japan, the reaction could be different. They might pour resources into their own hypersonic research, or deepen security ties with the United States to hedge against China's edge. A Mach 16 strike aircraft would make existing missile defenses nearly useless, forcing countries to rethink how they protect their territory. And then there's the global arms control debate. During the Cold War, nuclear weapons triggered treaties to limit stockpiles. Hypersonics could spark a new conversation. Should there be limits on weapons that can strike anywhere on Earth in minutes? Or will nations race forward, justifying their programs by pointing at what China, Russia, or America are building? In short, this isn't just about flying faster. It's about reshaping deterrence, diplomacy, and defense strategy across the planet. A single engine concept could influence how nations trust or fear each other for decades. But no matter how bold the claim, extraordinary technology always invites scrutiny. And experts worldwide are asking the same question. Can China really prove this in the real world? Big claims make big headlines. But engineers and analysts know to pause before celebrating. China says its oblique detonation ramjet has hit Mach 16 in tests. But so far, those tests are in a wind tunnel, not in the open sky. That's the first caveat tunnel success doesn't equal flight success. In real-world conditions, air isn't perfectly stable, weather matters, and vibrations multiply. Sustaining controlled combustion at those speeds in the atmosphere is far harder than simulating it in a lab. The second question is materials and maintenance. 
Even if an engine can survive minutes at Mach 16, can it be flown again and again without melting down? Rockets can afford to be single use. Aircraft engines cannot. Then there's the proof factor. Independent observers will look for real-world demonstrations, flight tests with telemetry data released, peer-reviewed papers explaining the combustion stability, video or third-party confirmations of sustained operation. Until those arrive, skepticism is healthy. Finally, even if the technology works, there's the issue of cost and vulnerability. Hypersonic aircraft would be expensive to build and maintain, and as history shows, for every new weapon, a new countermeasure eventually emerges. So while China's claim may be groundbreaking, the world is still waiting for one thing, proof that it flies, not just that it burns in a tunnel. And that brings us to the big picture. Even with doubts, the potential is enormous. If China really pulls this off, the way we move, fight, and explore space could be transformed. Step back for a moment. A plane that circles the Earth in just two hours. It sounds like science fiction, but if China's claims hold up, it could mark the start of a new era in human mobility. This isn't just about China versus the United States or who controls the skies. It's about how fast we as a species can cross the planet and maybe even reach space. Think about it. Railroads shrank continents, jet engines shrank oceans, and now hypersonics could shrink the globe itself. The world would no longer feel separated by days of travel. It would feel almost borderless, connected in hours. But remember, the story isn't finished yet. So far, the claim lives in labs and tunnels. The world still waits for proof in the sky. Until then, the promise of Mach 16 sits on the knife's edge between breakthrough and bold ambition. So let me ask you, if you had the power to travel anywhere in the world in two hours, how would it change your life? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. And if you want to keep following this story, hit subscribe, turn on notifications, and join us for our next deep dive. In the upcoming episode, we'll explore the hidden science of thermal protection, the heat shields that might make hypersonic flight possible. Until then, one number to remember, two hours. That's what makes this more than a boast. It's a glimpse into the future of flight.